Broadcasting the information the mainstream media won't touch. This is The Richie Allen Show in association with DavidIke.com. Listening in and hoping to hear uh, Mikko Palade, and we won't talk anymore about Mikko until we find out what's going on with him, is none other than my uh, great mate and colleague David Icke himself. David, welcome. Hello, Rich. I thought you might need a bit of help till um, till uh, the next guest comes on. It's lovely to have a bit of help. I, I, I love the fact that you've um, you, you've you've uh, you've come on. I, I'm not shy of prattling away to myself, but it's lovely to have somebody to talk to. Listen, forget about me. Go for a minute. Let me ask you. This. I don't think I've ever asked you this in all the time I've known you. Is racism real? Are there people who hold genuine beliefs about the? morality and the intellectual capacity of other ethnicities in your experience? Oh, yes, of course there are. Um, we have 7.5 billion people on the planet. And therefore, if it's possible, um, it will be happening somewhere. Uh, so I, I don't have um, any doubt whatsoever. In fact, I've met them where people do believe that um, they have a racial superiority. Uh, where it starts to get more complicated is that the um, prevailing um, norm within this whole racist industry, which is what it is, has been that y- you have to be white to be a supremacist, a racial supremacist. You do not. Um, th- this is the thing that really... Um, we need to get across in this madness that's happening, this calculated, manipulated madness. For instance, you don't have to be German to be a Nazi. No. Right? You don't have to be a a German in the 1930s and 40s to be a Nazi. It is not a race. It is a state of mind. And that state of mind uh, can manifest itself through any race. So any group of people who say um, you cannot call us uh, Nazi, you cannot say that any of us are Nazi, um, is is basically trying to avoid um, basic common sense that the Nazi mentality, the loving mentality, the something in between mentality, the the greed mentality, the narcissistic mentality, the caring for others mentality, all of these things can manifest through any racial type. And we have this major, major problem with what I'll call groupthink. Now, when I say groupthink, most people will, will... perceive that to be everyone thinking the same. And that that is um, one expression of groupthink. But there's another expression of it, and that's where people think in groups. In other words, they don't see the individuality of people. They see only the group. And this is where you get uh, the phrase uh, like, it's the Jews, it's the Muslims, it's the Freemasons. And when anyone says it's the, what follows is always a nonsense. Because it's not it's the anyone. Um, what we're looking at is a mentality. And that mentality can express itself through any racial uh group. But if we think in in groups, then um, you don't look at, say, Jewish people, given the topicality of it. And you don't look at what this person says and does, and what this person says and does, and what this person says and does. You say, it's the. And this group think manifests on both sides of the the divide, if you like, because you've got some people saying it's the Jews. And from the Zionist point of view, as we've had so much evidence of in recent times, you have them saying you cannot say this about any of us. 
So both are expressions of groupthink, and both are nonsense. Nonsense. There are some lovely Jewish people. There are some caring Jewish people. Uh, 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 there, there are people that um, uh, absolutely vehemently oppose Zionism. Um, what what the manipulators want, whether it's the, the, the Jewish people example or the Muslim people example or the white people example, is to get people thinking in groups, because then you can play one group off against another group and you've got divide and rule. Once you enter the realms of intelligence instead of programming, you then start to see the individuals within those groups. There are Muslims that commit atrocious acts. There are Muslims, uh, for goodness sake, that are uh, manifesting as this ISIS group. And there are Muslims, which I've met actually in the Middle East as well as other parts of the world, are some of the kindest, nicest, loveliest people you'll ever meet in your life. Yeah. They'd give you anything, even though they've got nothing. So we have to break this, and it is manipulated, this manipulated programming where people see themselves um, as a group that cannot be uh, collectively, therefore individually within the collectively um, criticized in any way. And on the other side, people saying it's the group in its entirety. This is, this is the... This is the perceptions of the perceptional uh, state of madness. It's insane. And, and, and both of these group thinkers um, are playing their part in creating this world that we see now where uh, groups are being played off against each other again and again and again and again. And you see it um, uh, everywhere you look now. It's like someone's pressed a button. This is the next stage. We're going to play them off against each other big time. So um, you take this Antifa um, and, and, and the, 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 the sheep-like mentality that follows it and supports it. Remind the listeners, David, who Antifa are, because a lot of people ask me, yeah, what's this Antifa? Antifa yeah. are a, a, they, they call themselves a, uh, uh, a, 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 a global um, a group, which is not actually an organization, but, but, but shares uh, anti-fascist uh, views. And um, uh, they uh, basically uh, behave in, in a similar way around the world. Um, but if you go deeper and deeper, deeper, deeper enough into Antifa, you'll find that the less than 1%, which those that support Antifa claim to despise, will actually be behind Antifa because what is happening is exactly all this playing groups off against groups um, and races off against races. This is all part of the less than 1%, the hidden hands uh, uh, policy of massive global divided rule. But so you take Antifa and what they are doing is breaking up um, meetings um, by uh, people uh, they uh, say they don't agree with in the United States, or other parts of the world as well. But the United States is very topical after what's happened at Charlottesville and, and beyond. Now, within some of these groups whose events they are um, breaking up uh, and uh, violently, will be some who will have um, a, a, an idea, a belief, staggeringly mistaken, that that there is some kind of white supremacy, um, uh, racial type. And as I said to uh, uh, many people on the far right over the years, if you are the master race, I'm glad I'm bloody not. <laughs> um, uh, but because of this group thing, um, everyone, everyone who doesn't agree with the Antifa program, because that's what it is, is a Nazi. People that um, uh, go along and just uh, have a, a, an event calling for freedom of speech is a Nazi. Uh, it, it's not, well, you, you're, you're saying you're white supremacist and you're better than everyone else and you say this and, and you're, all that stuff. No, no, it's not seeing the individual behavior and seeing the individual uh, uh, view. Um, it's labeling an entire group called white people having a meeting. Um, white, white people who are not 
uh, Antifa supporters, that is, um, as Nazi. Um, and, and, and if you look at the transgender uh, situation, um, the Muslim uh, situation, um, the political correct um, situation in, 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 in its entirety, it's all about playing different groups off against each other um, by perceiving all those groups as some kind of blob. Um, some yeah. kind of blob mentality instead of seeing the individuals uh, and the individual behavior and the individual views within them and looking at them and realizing that actually it's not a blob. A, l a lot of people who, who say this transgender uh, uh, agenda has got d ridiculously out of hand are transgender people. Uh, I mean, <laughs> people who um, uh, uh, look at some of the, 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 the destruction of freedom of speech. You can't say that, you can't say that, you can't say that. Or people who you would think would be agreeing with it, but they're not. They're, they're saying, not. well, look, I'm not offended by that. What's the problem? I don't feel there's a problem. The, the problem is being created, and it's being created by this groupthink. And and if, if we do not um, start to have the maturity of looking at individual behavior and individual views as opposed to treating everyone with a certain color skin or a certain religious background as one uh, group who all think and act the same, then this divide and rule is going to uh, create a catastrophe in terms of um, uh, warring factions uh, and um, upheaval. And the other thing is, um, you know, if someone... Um, comes at me with a with a, a machete right um i might actually have a problem because uh, i could be done done some damage with a machete right but if something <laughs> someone comes at me with words well whether i'm uh, affected by those words it's not like a machete when it hits you um actually uh, there are consequences um words are a choice about whether you are affected by them or whether you are not. Being hurt, being offended is a choice. And, you know, I have to smile to myself um, uh, recently where um, I, I, I'm being attacked and people trying to silence me for saying this. You can't say that. You upset this people. You're, you're offending these people. Um, when for the last nearly 30 years, I've lived my life um, uh, in the face of ongoing ridicule and abuse. Um, but because it's not uh, uh, directed at me because I'm a, a white male, uh, then well, that's, that's okay. You, you, you can do that. It's not a problem. It's not politically incorrect to give me decades yeah, yeah, of abuse yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and ridicule. Um, and yet um, it should be according to political correctness. But from my point of view, I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn. Why? Because I've chosen not to care what people think of me. And, and along with this, um, this groupthink program um, has come this, this other deeply connected program whereby everyone is being constantly encouraged to be offended by whatever anyone says about them that they don't like. And, and, and if we go on like this, it's the end of discourse. You know, um, when you've got uh, people like um, uh, Facebook and uh, Google saying that we, we are going to treat as conspiracy theories um, and therefore suppress their circulation, anything that does not conform with accepted political and scientific fact, right? Just look back a few years, a few decades, a few centuries, and see what people believe to be political, social, and scientific fact, that through discourse and challenge and questioning were shown to be utter frickin' nonsense. But if you can't have this discourse because um, only this narrow band of acceptable opinion and view 
is allowed to circulate, then one of the expressions of it is not only that people lose freedom of speech, but that the human race regresses mentally, emotionally, and intellectually. Because it can't grow because it, it, its, its current status quo perceptions can't be challenged. And so when Miko Pelled is talking today, I don't know what's happened to him, but um, talking today about let's just um, dis have discourse and, 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 and um, let's, let's uh, have debate and see where we go. That's the, that's the way the human race has expanded its understanding since the human race was created. Since the year dot, absolutely once right. you Once you stop that, first of all, um, you start to regress because the status quo is never challenged, so the status quo starts to solidify. But secondly, it means once you have um, a... Um, a block, a censorship of open free discourse, it means that someone's deciding what discourse there can be and what discourse there can't be. And once you enter those realms, you're in a tyranny. Because that which is dictating what can be said and heard is going to do so on the basis of what benefits itself. And, and, and so we are really, Richie, now at this, this crossroads, this fork in the road now. And it, it's big time. And it's come on really quickly in the yeah, last very quick. little while. Very quick. Where we as a, a, as a human race, as a consciousness beyond the human race, I've got to decide if we are going to go on walking uh, down this, actually walking backwards with our heads bowed, saying, yes, sir, no, sir, anything you say, sir, down this road to uh, what would make all well wince where it's designed to end up, or whether we are actually going to stand up and say, no one is going to dictate to us what we think, no one's going to dictate to us what we say and what we discuss. Because if, if we allow that to happen, then then not only will tyranny come, it in itself is a tyranny. And, and these people, whether they are Zionist zealots or Muslim zealots or any white supremacist zealots, whatever they are, they are all standing on the same mental and emotional ground. Um, labeled staggering, staggering levels of arrogance. And also, um, I've never met anyone or observed anyone who wanted to silence others who didn't have something to hide. All the abuse that I've had for nearly 30 years, I don't want to censor any of them. I don't want to censor idiot journalists writing idiot things about me. I don't want to do that because once you start to censor what people can say, then you're starting again to walk down that road of tyranny. That doesn't mean there, 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 there shouldn't be uh, consequences for what people say in the sense that if you are um, urging people into violence and urging people into, into beating someone up, or burning a building full of people down, there are laws against that. And therefore, they need, it needs to be dealt with. Prosecute That's a the criminal people. act. Absolutely. But, 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 but to, to censor people actually speaking, let's just think about that. You are dictating to another human being what their vocal cords can manifest. What kind of ludicrous world is that? If people want to, you know, like I say, um, urge people into violence, there are laws against that to stop other people being hurt. But free speech itself, and you, you were right. It's a point I've made many times when you say about uh, even Miko Pelled. I don't want to silence Zionists, um, Zionist zealots. I don't want to silence the campaign for anti-Semitism from telling their lies about me. 
because I can deal with that. Um, I want the free flow of information because then you are you are saying to 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 humanity in general, be mature, get informed, make your own mind up what you make of what these people are saying. This person saying that, this person saying that, you decide. Not a censor saying you can hear this, but you can't hear that. Therefore, you're far more likely yeah, to believe yeah. what you hear rather than uh, what you don't even know exists because we're not letting you hear it. Let's hear all views and then let's make our own mind up. Because in the end, um, sanity will prevail if the free flow of information is allowed to proceed. Insanity and tyranny will prevail whenever freedom of expression is um imposed upon. Folks, you're listening to David Ike. Miko Pared was supposed to be on the programme today. We've not heard from Miko. At this stage, I'm beginning to think that he made a decision at some stage this afternoon not to come on because he hasn't been in touch. If something had happened, he would have been in touch, I reckon. I have communicated quickly with John Rappaport. John said he's happy to come on in 10 minutes, around 20 past the hour or so. He's happy to wait a few minutes. David jumped into the breach. Very important stuff, this. Yeah, I don't want to take John's time, though. Not at all. You've, um, no, it's, it's great to have you on. It's great that you jumped in to fill that void. And uh, my, my listeners do hear too much of me, and I'm not joking when I say that. Um, it, it, you know, we, we, we get to... I get to do this every night of the week, and I get a good old say, and uh, it's good to have that counterbalanced. It's really important what you're saying. It is really important. We dealt with Ofcom some years ago, and we were told... We were given reams of pages of of documentation about what might be harmful. And when we looked at it, me, I, I, I and, and one other person who's not going to be named on this programme again, we looked at all that documentation. And most of what's deemed as harmful isn't harmful to ordinary men and women from ethnicity A or ethnicity B. What they deem as harmful is harmful to the establishment. It's harmful to, in terms of people might actually find out who you guys really are. That's what they mean by harmful. That's my understanding of it today, you know, on my little journey of covering these issues. When does, when people tell you that something is harmful, it's very rarely harmful to the group they claim it's harmful to. It's usually harmful to them. And Paled said something yesterday, which I, you could not not agree with David. Let people say what it is they want to say. Let's not criminalise somebody saying that they don't think the Holocaust happened or they don't think this happened or that happened or whatever. Let's vehemently disagree with them if that's our position and have an open debate about it. But let's not criminalise it. That's just common sense, that. Um, Criminalising someone having another version of history, even if their perception of history is fundamentally uh, uh, unsupportable um, is, is, from my point of view, utterly ridiculous. And if their point of their view of history is completely unsupportable, then evidence in the face of their view will make it very clear that their view of history is yeah. unsupportable. And that will be the end of the story. Um, you know, <laughs> what we're looking at, I mean, I, I have been writing about this for, for quite a while. What we're looking at is a movie script uh, and the movie script is unfolding. Um, and now, uh, more than any other time, blatantly, freedom of expression, um, as we've reached that point on the script where freedom of expression is being targeted um, in the most extreme fashion, like never before. Wherever you look, you can't say this, you can't say that, you can't have that view, you can't have that opinion. Um, and and we, we, we need to see it for what it is. Um, this is not something that's randomly happening. This is a script and an agenda to destroy freedom of expression. And um, it's not even a time where we are now that you can say if we if we don't do something, then uh, we'll lose freedom of expression. Freedom of expression, to a large extent, has already been lost, and it's and, and most of it has been lost to the most insidious form of censorship, which is self censorship. 
Once you um, have a view um, that is different to the tyranny, which is uh, uh, being policed uh, 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 to a very large extent by those that call themselves progressives, I'm talking about the non-liberal progressives um, that um, claim to be anti-fascist uh, while acting in, in the very same ways that the fascists of Nazi Germany Absolutely. acted, which is to uh, burn books and um, and and stop people speaking in public um, and to intimidate people who have a different view. That's how the Nazis uh, uh, acted in Germany, to stop um, their exposure. And that's what these um, so-called anti-Nazi uh, um, uh, progressives, non-liberal uh, progressives are doing today. So basically, we're seeing the same process and the same techniques um, couched in, in, in a different label, if you like. As I said, I think when we were talking some time before, you know, if you want to bring in a fascist tyranny, then it's not a good idea, especially with what happened in the, the 1930s and 40s in Germany. It's not a good idea to do it through someone with a with a small mustache who's goose stepping down the street with his arm in the air. Um, you do it through um, uh, groups that call themselves anti-Nazi. Yeah. And we, we, we again, this is another part of, of breaking down this groupthink uh, program, is to not listen to words. Don't listen to what they say and what they say they stand for. Look at how they behave. And then you'll see what's really uh, going on and what they're really about. And it's like that old um, that old phrase about, you know, if it quacks like a duck and it waddles like a duck and it's got feet like a duck, then it's a duck. And if it uh, if it acts like uh, fascist and it, it uh, talks um, uh, like fascist in terms of uh, what it says uh, you, you cannot say and you cannot do and, and you cannot uh, uh, meet even without facing violence, then it talks like fa uh, a fascist. It waddles like a fascist and it's got feet like a fascist. Let's call it what it is. It's fascism. Um, and and what, what political correctness is, is psychological fascism. And, and once people um, feel intimidated about um, speaking their truth, whether th their truth is, is, turns out to be factually right or not, um, it's their truth. It's their personal truth. Once they um, uh, reach the point where they're intimidated uh, into silence, well, we're not even having a debate now. We're not having a debate whether this person should be allowed to say this or um, why they shouldn't be allowed to say it. There's just no debate because they're just not saying it anymore. And this is where we're going. Um, and everybody, and I hope some of them are listening to this program. There won't be many, but I hope some of them are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that um, if you get involved in a Twitter storm lambasting someone you don't agree with, and calling them uh, uh, this, that, and the other, and threatening them as um, as uh, they do, um, then you are engaged in in fascism. You are engaged in psychological fascism, intimidating people into silence through fear of the consequences of speaking their own truth and giving their own opinion. And don't tell me you're anti-fascist and this, that, or the other, anti-Nazi. Don't give me that crap. You're acting like the Nazis did. And um, if you're afraid of the free flow of information, if you're afraid of someone having a different opinion to you, then you haven't got much confidence in your own opinion. Do you know, we'll, um, thanks for, for doing this, for jumping in, by the way. I, no I'd problem. Have, I'd have asked you, but uh, I know you work all day long. Um, I... <laughs> I know what your routine is. Um, I'd have asked you, but uh, I, I wouldn't be doing that to you because you work hard enough as it is. Uh, I'm going to give John a ring in three minutes. These themes David is discussing here are among the th the the themes. See, the Irish can't say they're THs, but that could be that might just be racism, or or it could be true because we don't say or t we don't pronounce our THs. But the themes in David's forthcoming book, uh, there are several hugely important themes on this area. Uh, he's exploring in a way that I don't think has uh, been done before. It's hugely important. This, there's no doubt about that. Um, we'll be um, chatting for the Dot Connector podcast on uh, Thursday, Friday uh, this week. 
you're in Maastricht very soon. You're in, you're everywhere, right? I mean, I'm in Slovakia, and then we've got Slovakia. the book launches in uh, in November in uh, in Edinburgh. All the tickets have gone for that, and Manchester and and London. Um, and London. It's a it's a three course dinner and some music, and I'm going to speak and answer questions for two hours and, and talk Brilliant. about this new book, which um, uh, even by my standards is absolutely explosive. Um, not just because of what's in it, but ma massively, massively because of what's in it, but also um, because of the environment in which it's being published, um, uh, the world we've been describing for the last half an hour. Um, so, um, you know, uh, I think a lot of people, uh, when it comes out, are going to be punching the air. All those people that self-censor because they're frightened of speaking their truth, they're going to be punching the air. And all those people that want to destroy freedom of speech in their arrogance um, are going to be taken to their beds and sipping sweet tea. Fantastic. The I look forward to it. It's going to be brilliant. Slovakia, Maastricht, that's coming up very soon. DavidIke.com, the Worldwide Wake Up, uh, dot com as well for tickets. The speaking events, the one in Edinburgh is gone, but Manchester and London find uh, tickets for that. Going to be absolutely brilliant. And I can't wait for the book. Thanks for your thoughts on that, David. It's um, been brilliant. Really has been Cheers, brilliant. Rich. Thanks for Give jumping in. Give my best to John. I, it's a long time since I met John Rappaport. Back in the days when I had very long hair <laughs> in California <laughs> when I was talking to was nobody. Less, um, less miles on the clock back then. He's, yeah, he's a really absolutely. good guy, John. He's not Give been on for my ages. Best. I will indeed. It's the first thing I'll say. Thanks, mate. I'll talk to you real soon. Cheers, Rich. Cheers, David. Bye for now. Um, pretty great of David to do that, John. But he was listening, expecting to hear Miko Paletti. He wanted to hear what Miko had to say. And when he didn't show, uh, he jumped into the into the void, into the breach, which is brilliant. Really important stuff, that. Um, the book will be out uh, soon. Stay in touch with davidike.com for that. Uh, I can't wait to read it. Mm -hmm.